Hi, I'm Abby Brokaw. Hi, I'm Rich McLeod. And welcome to Exploring Salem. We're here at World Beat Festival 2010. Sponsored by the Salem Multicultural Institute. Let's check it out. What is your name? Uh, my name is uh, Warner Austin. I'm uh, Eastern Cherokee in uh, Manahaw, Suwon. And what are you doing here at World Beat today? Celebrating, like <laughs> everyone else. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes my uh, fourth year here, and we've enjoyed every year. I noticed you have your family here, too, and I thought it was a great thing. Your family was performing. Was that your family, any of that? Oh, yes, indeed. Okay. <laughs> yes, uh, yes, my uh, uh Grandchildren, uh, nieces, nephews. What dance were they performing? Uh, several uh, different dances: uh, grass dance, uh, uh, fancy shawl dance, uh, jingle dress dance, and uh, uh, each uh, each uh, style has uh, different dances uh, that they do. Also, sounds wonderful. And these draw big crowds. Do you talk to people afterwards who ask you about the the dances or the the outfits? Uh, yes, we do. Um, education is uh, what we're about. Um, it's uh, one thing to uh, uh, see what's going on. It's another thing for the people uh, to understand what it is that they're seeing. And what is your name? Linda Bowers. And what are you doing here at World Beat today? Well, we are presenting our project to the Salem community who has been supporting us for several years now and we're very happy to be here on a beautiful day that is not 100, 100 <laughs> degrees. <laughs> Off so what is, what is your project about? Uh, we have a scholarship fund for girls uh, from a remote rural village in Zambia, in the northwest province of Zambia, and our daughter was in the Peace Corps serving in this remote village and we lost her in a bicycle accident. So this is a memorial scholarship fund and uh, girls in the village would be married at age 12 and have 8 to 10 children and they would not go on to school because their parents couldn't afford to send them. So before our scholarship fund there were seven girls in grades 8 through 12. Today we have 90 and we have a total of over 200 and we are very excited we have four girls who have gone on beyond high school. And the short amount of time we've been doing this we have changed the way these girls look at themselves and we've changed the way the village looks at the girls. We are in the Ray of Hope Foundation tent. Uh, what is your name? My name is Teresa Gibson. And tell us a bit about this tent. Sure. Um, I'm the founder and the executive director of this organization. Um, I started this organization about seven years ago uh, to do work in Kenya. And our programs are, fi are primarily focused on educational programming um, and health. I'm a physician, and so uh, my interest really came from working with uh, women in Kenya and rural communities as they were giving birth um, and focused on safe motherhood. So do you currently live in Kenya? Um, no, I, don't, I wish I did, but I don't live in Kenya. I live here in the Portland, uh, Salem area. And so uh, how does what you do here um, in the States, of, like how, how, do, how, do you, how does your work get done here to help them there? Absolutely. So we do a number of things. Um, our focus is really on finding volunteers and people who are interested uh, in either health or educational programming and linking them with communities that we've identified in Kenya uh, for, for instance, uh, computers, uh, computer education, teachers, um, people who are willing to go and teach community health workers. So really an exchange of uh, information, technology, and resources between um, this area and in Portland. Um, and so you have items so you have art and <laughs> yeah. jewelry. Do you want to tell us about some of the specific sure, things happy, in this tent? I'm happy to tell you about um, some of those things. So um, about uh, six or seven years ago as I was wandering through some of the markets in Nairobi I thought to myself you know this would be a great way I should buy a bunch of stuff and bring it back <laughs> and um, sell it. <laughs> and that would be, you know, I mean, I, that would be a great way to, to as a fundraiser um, and also as exposure for our organization and what we do. So um, what we've 
done is we've developed a group of people over time who we buy things from. So baskets that we have are primarily from a women's cooperative. Uh, then we buy paintings, uh, things like this. These are um, beads that come from Ethiopia. This is amber. Um, we have something like this. I don't know if you're able to, if you're able to see it, but is a is a um, a. a beaded leather mirror um, that there's a young man who uh, makes in, in Kenya. And so we are supporting a number of different people. These are great mobiles. Um, so they have little dancing people. They're made out of banana fiber. So, you know, we just try to find unique things um, that we can bring into the community as a way to to talk about the culture of, of Kenya and the crafts and arts and the expression um, and creativity of the people who are there. Great, great. Sounds wonderful. Thank you for talking okay, to us. Again, welcome. Ray of Hope. <laughs> What's your name, sir? Uh, my name is uh, Akwasi Safu Kantanka. Akwasi is my first name. Okay. Yeah. And, and what is your organization? Uh, this is called Safu Scrubs. Yeah. Tell us something about your organization. Oh, uh, I'm a nurse by profession. I'm Aaron. I work in the hospital in Poland. And I am originally from Ghana. Yeah. And what I do is that I was born in a village in Ghana, a rural area, no electricity, no running water. And that's where I started my life. And I became a teacher, a school teacher over there in the village. I moved here and I went to nursing school. So what we do is that uh, I collect medical supplies, school supplies. People donate old clothes or new and shoes, everything, and I take to the villages in Ghana to help them. And I bring stuff by, from the local people, and then I sell them at a reduced price, and I use all the proceeds to ship more stuff to help them. Well, there, there, are some, yeah, there are some beautiful artifacts in yes. this tent. Did you want to tell us about some of them? Yeah, sure. Uh, we have the baskets here, and you're familiar with African basket. Yeah, we went to two years ago to a village in north of Ghana, and it's very poor area, but the women are very, very uh, good in the baskets. So we gave the clinics over there and the school kids stuff to use, and then their mothers also weave the baskets, and then we bring them here. And like I said, we sell them very reduced price, and then we collect a lot of stuff and send to them to help them. It's wonderful. Uh, where, so does this stuff come from all over? Is it a few places in particular? Yeah, these all come from Ghana, yeah. and they all come from different areas and different villages. This, I have some drums here, if you can see. These drums were, were made in a village in an Ashanti region and the chief drama is about 85 years old wow. and that's all he does uh, by uh, with the drumming so we got some from him and then we also have his village and actually if you can come closer there's one drum over there and that tells the story of the village he's carved all the story all over the drum we're all handcrafted this is called jimbe it's very popular and the top here is goat skin. They eat, they rear the goats. Almost every house in the village, they have goats. They eat the meat, but they don't throw the skin away. Uh, they make shoes, clothes, and drums with the shoes. Yeah. And then the design here is very popular in the Ashanti, in the middle of the country. It's called the Kente design. And they have it in different, different items too. So can you show us how these drums sound? Excellent. <laughs> All right, we are here with Carolyn Wagner. And what is the organization you're here with today? This is a combination of my handiwork and I'm also uh, helping sell uh, CDs and uh, videos for Jan Michael Looking Wolf, who had his concert here last night. Awesome. And what type of music does he do? He's uh, Native American uh, flutist, but he also plays guitar. He also teaches.
uh, Native American flute. He does a mixture of the traditional um, Native flute. He also does rock, and he's teaching his students um, to explore other things, and so they do also jazz and reggae okay. with their flutes. Well, most of this stuff I've actually made myself. It's made with the, uh, some of the traditional beads. These are the pipe bone beads here. Um, and then um, also have some buffalo teeth and some uh, bone things. Uh, it's it's kind of hard work to do, but it's very relaxing. And then I've also kind of made some cell phone uh, charms, or you can use them for zipper pulls. And cell phone medicine bags because <laughs> we all have our cell phones now it's interesting you've brought sort of a creative touch to the modern age of technology <laughs> anyway good job i really enjoy this tent thank you for talking to us thank you. thank you for coming here we are here in front of where the dragon boat races are taking place do you have any idea who's racing today absolutely no idea but let's go to the races shall we off to the races we go to johnny good time <laughs> 